The trees are calling to us. Oh my God, it's huge. We can't resist. It's big, it's wonderful, it's, it's grand. We can't let go, but we must. If we want to see this, turn to this. I love this place rocks. Dead leaves on the ground mean one thing. I'd better get our next job started pronto. Linda's place is a new build, which is a refreshingly blank slate. What I like about my backyard is the size. And speaking of size... <laughs> oh, monstrous tree. Yeah, it's clearly been there for a long time. That's gotta be 100 years old. But the tree isn't the only monstrous thing in this backyard. It's up this. the big concrete <laughs> no. When the builder was doing the house, originally he was going to put a garage here. So he poured the cement pad for the garage, and we said, no, we really didn't want a garage. I just felt that it just takes up way too much of the backyard. Hmm. Getting rid of this won't be cheap. What I don't like about my backyard is the fact that it's a disaster right now because we just moved into the house in the summer and it's a new build. There's nothing back here. So as far as design goes... It's an adult entertaining, you know, having friends and family over for right. dinner. And no specific style. I like a more relaxed style. All right, this is going to be uh, very, very cool. We'll turn it into something that's pretty spectacular. Kennedy seems great. He seemed to ask the right questions. He seemed to understand what it was we were looking for. I love Linda. She's letting us do whatever we want. We don't have a cottage. We don't go out of the city. So it's really nice to have a calm, quiet place to, to escape to, even though we're still in the city. Carte blanche are two of my favorite words. I've got to get this place measured up immediately. Wow, another brand new house. It's the one on the right, not the one on the left. Oh. I knew that. This is a uh, right away. But, uh, <laughs> There's a cat on the window. What is this string? That's uh, oh, the thing. I don't know, but you tripped on it. Wow, look at that tree. Isn't that spectacular? You think we can wrap our hands around it? That's like five foot diameter. Oh my god, it's huge. The canopy's so high here that the light still comes underneath. It'd be great if we could remove this. This really dominates the back garden. That's the challenge. All right, let's get measuring. And that's three feet. Next up, a meeting of the minds. James Joel, there's a picture of Linda's house there. Right. Oh, there's a lot of fencing on both sides. Can yeah. we ban this from ever happening? It's Why, the that's, worst. I think we cannot legally ban it. Can't well, stand it's, it's it. It's northern man. vernacular, man. It's got to go, man. <laughs> but getting to well, their style. I think their interior is just a traditional, but updated uh, traditional kind hmm. of look to it. Clean like materials. I like you know it's smooth granite. All I can imagine in this backyard is just the materials being really upscaled a little Rich. bit more than just Rich feeling. I mean, flagstone is, and then you go to saw cut flagstone. Well, look at this one. It gets wet. The green comes out beautifully. It does. Mm -hmm. You know, it reminds it's me of uh, beer soaked floor dried out. The staining is just gorgeous. They want a water feature, which is okay. cool. I love that. You yeah. tell them they shouldn't do it because you need a biology class to maintain them. And they cost a fortune but you know because what? you got to do it right. You don't want them to see the pond liner. You want them to see a nice natural stone at the bottom. It would still cost a fortune to put natural stone at the bottom of the water feature. But aside from that, they can be beautiful. I do like them sometimes. <laughs> so I guess we can move on to the next stage, putting pen to paper. I'm leaving too. Good luck, dude. Coffee. Well, that was helpful. Maybe it's time for a one-on-one -on -one with Lauren. Gar this garage isn't going to work because we talked about getting the car in here. That's the end of the right of way shared by these two houses. So I if see. you want to take a car into the back, you have to pull it all the way into the back past that auto line. So that's going to eat up some of the space. It's right. going to be a little bit of a challenge. Right. You know what? we got to screen this car off. And almost everybody puts their entertainment area right up against the back of their home. I mean, it works because it's so close to the kitchen, but it's important uh, during our nice weather to get back into the garden. It really makes a big difference. Yeah, yeah. If you can incorporate a like, bench. You don't mean a little. Victorian bench. You mean a bench? Yeah. Is that what you're thinking? It makes sense to put something in this garden that's really oversized, over scale almost, yeah. because of the size of that tree. I'm thinking maybe a big slab of wood with strapping of stainless steel for the legs. The other thing she requested was uh, a shed. It's always uh, goofy to me that it's stuck in the corner. Well, it's, it's also in. nice if we can do a storage area that rather than have it look like a shed, that looks like something that's architectural. It's just, it's always a tough sell just because of the cost of them usually. But that might be an idea, just getting one of those kits and then just jazzing it up rather than just starting from scratch. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm going to leave this up to you and okay. uh, so you can have okay. fun. I hate to waste the concrete port for the garage pad, but for this design to work, it's got to go. Here we go, Linda. This is how we're gonna get a little bit of interest as far as grade changes go. Because your door is four feet off the ground, we're gonna walk you down slowly into the backyard. 
This is going to be the first level of entertainment. Okay. It's 24 inches off the ground, so these two spaces feel like they're actually separated from okay. each other. In the middle here, we're doing six medium-sized trees. Okay. And it's kind of to fill this void in between the big tree and human scale. But to also divide the space up and have this feeling that you walk through like a miniature forest. Underneath this forest setting, we just want to do a water feature. It's just the feature itself. I'm not sure yet what it's going to be. Okay. The tree in the back corner, because it's such a spectacular canopy, we're locating the main patio underneath it. The main focus where you're going to dine. And then you got the shed at the end of it, so it kind of feels like it's part of this area. I don't see any major changes. I think it looks fabulous. Yeah. It looks awesome. Okay. Thanks so much, Thanks Kennedy. A lot. We're looking you're forward welcome. to it. Taking up this slab means a lot of noise and a big chunk of the budget. Question, how many men does it take to plug in a second jackhammer? So what's going on? We need you to knock on uh, the neighbor over there to see if we can get into the power. From inside the house, we can do that. Plug into their power? I don't want to go over there, eh? <laughs> what else? Don't make me do it. And that's not the only issue we're dealing with. So as you can see, we're hitting tons of roots. They're huge too, man. This is the roots we're going to run into everywhere, then for sure well, don't do it. Until we try a few spots, we're not going to know what we're into, right? We have pretty good indication we're screwed. I mean, you think we would know better, but you, know, you just want to do a certain style of the yard, and then, you know, you know, the guys that take care of that when you get there, then they tell you, yeah, we can't do this. Because we don't want to damage the tree, that's why. Getting this place ready for our design is really messy. It's so bad, we've had to call in reinforcements. What a headache. We're trying to clean up all the concrete and salvage all the rebar. It was only poured six months ago and it's still good and recycle it. With the old pad gone, it's time to prepare for the new one. And when you have a tree this large, you have to take great care to preserve the root system. These piers will support the weight of the concrete pad a few inches above the ground, so it won't put pressure on the roots. Luckily, we're able to recycle the gravel from under the original pad. And there was like 18 inches of gravel underneath it, so we were able to reuse it instead of dumping it and getting more. The gravel will allow for drainage under the patio area. This way the root system still gets water, and it won't impede the growth of the tree. The roots would make it really difficult if you want to dig holes. We're using post hole diggers instead of augers to reduce the risk of damaging the roots. It's tougher, slower, and presenting unexpected challenges. It cracked off, hit something this morning when it was really cold, so broke it right off. Makes it hard to dig with half of a post hole digger. How's it going at Linda's house, Kennedy? I think we're uh, good with the tree roots. I mean, the whole process was done, so we didn't damage too many roots, just a couple right. of piers. So right. it's like right. one foot and eight of them. Yeah. That's how much dirt actually got taken out. So you think, how much damage can that do to I'm sure you cut it cleanly after you, uh, you guys did it, because when you damage a root, it's just like if you damage a limb up top, you want to cut it clean so no disease enters it. Yeah. Yeah. So it heals better? Yeah. It's time to start laying some concrete of our own. Today we're just pouring the pad for the place on that we'll be laying. Quite a bit of concrete full load, all by wheelbarrows, trying to get in before the cold weather starts. This tree is thankful for this carefully made pad. Now, for that fantastic saw cut flagstone. The flagstone they're doing here is absolutely spectacular. This is primo perfect stone masonry. This is perfect random square cut right here. And the lines are all identical, like the width of the grout lines are, <laughs> it's perfect. Now that the flagstone patio is done, next on our hit list is a storage shed. Something lacking in many yards. We found this one online and customized the design. It comes pre-built, all we have to do is snap it together on site. We also had a bit of luck getting it installed just before the first snowfall. The only thing to go on now is the doors. And uh, this is a single door on this side for the garbage area. And then there's a dividing wall in the middle. And then this is a double door that we're going to put on so access. Primarily bikes are the ones out there annoying when trying to get out. So this is a double door that'll swing out to get all the bikes in. New flagstone patio? Check. Stunning and useful storage shed? Check. Now we've got to get started on the deck and slided privacy screening. And I couldn't be happier. Uh, the tarp allows us to uh, get the project done over the winter time so that at least in the spring the, um, uh, the project can continue. 
Who'd have thought you could build a deck in the winter? Genius. The cedar's all clear, that's what the designers wanted. Very few knots, it's very clean look. Because of that, and the cost involved with it, they've also asked us to not see any fasteners on the deck at all, so that means we're screwing from underneath, and uh, then it will all be nice and clean. It's fabulous. It looks almost like furniture. The fact that they could build the deck without any nails showing is just remarkable to me. I don't know much about carpentry, but it looks amazing. And the, uh, the screening is fabulous. I love the contrast between the dark wood and the lighter wood. Um, it looks incredible. Talking about great wood, what about that oversized bench I've pegged for this space? I need a big honking piece of wood. I don't care what type of tree it is, just whatever is going to work well. And I'm thinking a little bit lighter wood, just so it doesn't kind of contrast so close to the cedar. So yeah. we're going to go with ash. Nice. Nice and solid. The uh, for furniture building, right? Yeah, yeah, ash and poplar. The Let's scale of it alone is going to be beautiful. 12 foot. 12 foot, 14 inch by 14 inch wide. It makes sense to put something in this garden that's really oversized, over scale almost, yeah. because of the size of that tree. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> I can't wait to put this yeah. in. You know, can we see this kick? Let's cut it. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go hide, man. This James is afraid of the saw. What about Joel? Joel wants to ride it. See if he can just. Fearless or deathless? Yeah. Joel, your butt's on the line. So we've dealt with the roots of the huge maple and building the deck. Now it needs a haircut. Thomas is coming in to prune this gargantuan maple. We're gonna try to raise the lower canopy by probably about 20 feet. If we can get a little bit more light, the tree is in great shape. Very, very impressive actually. You don't see that this size of trees often in the city. You know what, when you prune a tree that big in the winter, I feel like, did That's they prune right. it? I mean, I can't I even tell they did anything. Really? It's huge. You know, it's the right time to prune a tree. You know why? Because the branches are, the leaves are off. You can't see the impact right away. You it's know, dormant. the neighbors don't get freaked out. It's, I, I like that. I was talking to Thomas before they were pruning the tree, and I said, if you can do anything, give them more sunlight in their yard. That's You brought light into their lives, Kennedy. I did. I may have brought in the light, but not water. I still have no idea what to do with the water feature, and time is running out. Spring has finally sprung, and the one thing still missing is that water feature I'm after. This is it. This is Linda's water feature. Well, Joe and I were at this job site yesterday measuring, oh, yeah. and we saw this eye beam with a hole in it. I don't know if that's too rough. What about like a steel plate with that's been like finished, so, like so rough. it's nice. Yeah. Oh boy. So it's a little bit. Oh, of this. Whoa. Oh, you know what? I've really got to um, got to work on my tan. Man. It's been a long winter. What do you think about this water feature? Okay, maybe we'll put off the water feature for now and work on Linda's planting plan. Like the whole backyard's canopied by this maple, but the canopy of it is so high. Yeah. So the sun actually streams under the canopy. It doesn't really create a lot of shade. That's so nice, these... man. Eight out of 10 gardens are shade I here, and uh, you get one that and has you... a bit of sunlight. It's like, all right, I can use a whole bunch more plants. The whole concept was have this upper sitting area, but have this medium-sized tree forest grove in yeah. between. Everything else is going to follow in the path of whatever these six are going to be. Service berry. Actually, I was thinking of Chanticleer pears. Perfect size, nice flower, all season interest. Well, you know, there's one that we always use that uh, we get a little tired of because we always use, but how do you feel about carrots? It can handle shade. All I know is around the water feature, I need coral bells, that bright yellow color. Looks really cool in the winter time. Cool, I think that's good. Right now? That's for the water feature. The sheer size of the other stuff going into this yard has given me an idea. I was, say, I, I was thinking that with a garden hose. <laughs> All right. Nope. There's a glimmer in this rock's eye. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just saw the top, because it has sort of a flat top. And hey, by Quinky Dinky, it has a, a yeah, bottom, the bottom that's flat. So it might be easier to balance in there. But is it high enough? Two and a half would be above the deck. It's too short. Like, this is two feet only. The weight of this, Lauren, is probably, what? 800 pounds? That one's probably closer to 1,000. This is uh, too big. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. It's but something out of the Flintstones. There's no way you're using it. But the height of that is what we're looking for. Oh, OK, height, yeah. Smaller than Texas would be nice. Oh, he's taking the easy Jay's, route out. Jay's like, screw See? them. Actually, this one is kind of cool. Oh, that's freaking awesome. Oh, this is it. See that sign? This is it. Yeah, that's beautiful. 
That is, for one stone, that is what you're looking for, man. No, I love it. It's got a really beautiful texture, color. It's got interest. I'm just putting water on it so I can see the color of this right. thing. Right. Look at that. That is so hot. And it's going to look even hotter alongside some plants and trees. The day the plants arrive is always really exciting for the client because they see the quickest transformation of anything else we do. But it never fails. There's always something the client wants to change on site. Talking to Nina this morning about the storage unit and the tree that's going here. I, I gotta look at the plant, but isn't the tree like there or something? The tree was like right here. It's amazing. Whenever you give people this much storage, you always need a little bit more storage. It's unbelievable. If it was two feet wider, we still need another storage. So, but they have to get to it, right? Because that was anticipated they were going to have storage back there. So we just got to move the tree out so they can actually get by and use this thing. Not only does this look cool, it is. It's easier and faster than shovels, gives a more even depth and creates a nice smooth finish on top. When you put soil in, everybody, not even the plants yet, just soil, people start going, oh. Finally, it's all coming together. Plants go in, in no time, and then it's like, we're off to the races, have fun. The water feature, that's it. The water feature, and a visit from our designer, Lisa. This is adult entertaining kind of feeling to the backyard, okay. but this is the barbecue section back there. Okay. And then this was just this loungy and feeling. I had drawn like a couple chaise lounges here. Okay, and the dining area? Dining back there, and that a big reason for that was because of the tree. Well, I love what you did with these yellow plants. I yeah. don't know what they are, but they're beautiful. Yeah. Coral bells. So if I can get some kind of color in the furnishings or the planters that play off of that, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. See you soon. See you soon. <laughs> Almost there, except for the water feature. But with a little help, we'll be done. <laughs> As for the water feature, first we bored a hole through the rock. Then we laid flat stones underneath for the base. Now, we just need to lift it into place. <laughs> Easier said than done. Once we lift it into place and line it up, we run a pipe through the hole and attach the pump that sits out of sight. Oh, that's the sound I've been waiting Hold for. Down. All we need now is to dress up the space and we're ready. Square actually specifically because the shape of the deck, the sheen of the glass kind of mimics the water behind us and the grid pattern adds a certain lightness, it adds texture. This is great because I wanted to get something that didn't have a back on it. It doesn't obstruct your vision. Mm -hmm. So whether you're in the dining area, you can see through to Kennedy's beautiful bench here. Right. So it's a really nice showcase and it's a great color. Wow. wow, I love that bench already. quite different. I love nice the place we're on. It's terrific. We absolutely love it. Right away, you get the client out and then immediately up gangplank right to the backyard where they can sit and hang out in the back. But I see yeah. three things right away that I love. I, I love that fence, the detail on the two-tone wood. And I, I love that bench with the metal. And I love this stone. Yeah, this is yeah. a beautiful stone. It's an aerosand stone and it's just like the normal Wyrton stone we use, but it's soft cut on all sides. It's sharp. Five months ago, our backyard was a complete disaster. And now it's like a paradise. It's exactly what we'd hoped for. The great thing about that barrier that was designed there is the slats in it will allow wind to come through rather than just being a solid barrier. The adjectives I'd use to describe this would be elegant and bold. Everything about it has got very strong character. The water features a strong character, the existing tree, the bench, and all the materials are really, really striking. I wanted Linda to have input in this water feature. Yeah. The design consideration was everything is so square that she wanted this kind of more of a natural kind of shape it's in the middle. Contract. We've noticed with the water feature that we're getting more birds now. There's a robin there now. We've had uh, finches come down, and I've never seen yellow finches in our backyard before. So it'll be interesting to see what other birds visit us over the summer. When you come outside into a space that's been designed well, it's hard to go back in. It's like it's, it's amazing to sit outside, and, and it's so much more relaxing outside than it is inside. It's such a perfect extension of our family room. It's like added a whole other room to our house for the summer. It's party time. I think I could suggest a poor man's tequila. Okay, let's do this. Who can make it? Who can bite it without I'm making a bite. face? Buddy, uh, ready? One, two, two three. three. Go. Oh, I can't even bite it. I can't even get my teeth into it. Bite it. Oh. 
Oh, do you know what he reminds me of? <laughs> Are these plastic? Puerto Vallarta. I'm yeah, out of here. I gotta Let's go. go. Bye, guys. Oh my god. I'm guessing this sucker weighs about as much as a small car. I don't wanna. No. This ain't happening. All right. When's the crane showing up? All right. I don't know about you guys.